I have built quite a few crystal radios and most of them are the wiper type. And that's because I've built about half a dozen of these with the variable capacitor and they just, none of them worked. They would get a station or two and that was it. And you know, one station is not a crystal radio. Two stations is barely there. It's got to get like three or more, more stations to actually be some kind of a crystal radio. And these things don't work. Uh, this particular one is all over the internet and uh, other people have written about it and just said, don't build this because it doesn't work. Okay, so I've gotten burned on several designs like this and I finally said, okay, I'm gonna try it one more time. I found a design I like and if this one doesn't work, I'm never building another one. So I've got this one and the reason I like it, let's talk about that. The reason I like it is because it has a circuit for the antenna ground and that's tightly coupled to the rest of the tank circuit, the resonant circuit. And that's usually a feature of a, of a better radio. Uh, the other, the other, next thing is that we have the uh, remainder of the inductor and it's been divided into the headphone uh, circuit with the detector and then the variable capacitor part of it. So the headphone is not like robbing power across the whole thing and the uh, antenna is not just blasting through the whole coil either. So this has some good features uh, of radios that are superior performers. So I said, okay, I will give this one last chance. And if it does not work, I am never building another one of these single capacitor crystal radio sets. Okay, so uh, let me go put it together and we'll see what we get. Before I do the big reveal, let me show you one of these for comparison. This is obviously a wiper version of a crystal radio. And this one does not have a separate circuit for the antenna ground. Um, it makes it susceptible to being overwhelmed by a strong signal, but otherwise it's a very good, very simple to operate crystal radio. And it's also very easy to build. And as, uh, as I mentioned, very low cost because most of this is just scrap stuff. The next step up from that is a crystal radio that has a separate circuit for the antenna ground and that's tunable. And then this is the tuning for the actual station. I have built a dual capacitor version of a crystal radio that works quite well. It has one capacitor to tune the antenna and one to tune the station. And you can see back here, there they are, one, two. Um, otherwise, it's pretty typical. It's got the detector crystal right there, uh, the resistor for the earphone, earphone ground, and the antenna connection right there. So yes, this one works well. Uh, but again, I was looking for a single, a single variable capacitor because Variable capacitors. I think I paid 12 bucks for the last one and that's a lot of money. So I don't want to, I don't want to do that again. I think this one costs two or three dollars to build. So yeah, you can build many of these for a uh, single, single uh, variable capacitor version. Okay. So let's do the big reveal. This is the crystal radio. And of course it uses their standard crystal earphone. This is much smaller than the others we looked at. This is only a one and a half inch coil, whereas the middle size one was a two inch coil and the big one was a three inch coil. Let's do a walk around on here. This is the antenna connection. The antenna comes in here, passes through 20 turns to this tap, and this tap comes over here and to the ground. So this is a tightly coupled system. The antenna is coming in here. It's got its own set of coils, if you will. It's still attached to the main coil, but a lot of the energy is passing directly out here to the ground. Then we pass through 30 more turns to this tap and it comes down here to this connection point. And this is where our crystal diode is. And it attaches to one side of the earphone resistor here, other side of the earphone. And then this wire passes underneath this frame over here to the ground. And that is the earphone circuit. 
Um, and then we go through 80 more turns, end of the coil, comes back over here to this attachment point, and this goes to one side of the capacitor right there, and then it comes out of the capacitor on the frame on the back side here, comes over here and goes to ground, and that's the circuit. So you may ask, um, why all this real estate over here? So no, uh, no spoilers, but um, a little bit of room for maybe some future project, but no spoilers. I guess we've covered it all. Now the next thing to do is to go hook it up to an antenna and make sure it does something for us. YouTube so far has not stopped me from showing you what's on the channels. Uh, I can't play what's on them, but I can show you what's happening. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen on the earphone, and I'm going to tune through the stations, and you'll be able to see over here what's, what it looks like. Now, right now, this is almost dead air on the uh, oscilloscope, and we'll tune this way, so we'll go towards the bottom of the scale. And I happen to know there's a station down there. There's one station. There's another station. This is a person talking. It's a man talking. Now let's go back the other way. It's a little bit of music right there. Oh, there's a woman talking. Can you see that? Yep. There's a woman talking. And it's faint. I'm starting to get bleed over from something else. Oh, here comes some music. Okay, so there's another channel. So I think that's the third channel we've encountered. One is very faint. This one is quite audible, as you can see from the output. There's somebody talking. So that's another station. Whoa. This is music. And this is a very loud station. I think this is the one that's about a kilometer from our house. It usually kind of overpowers everything else. Yeah, you can see it's still bleeding through. Sometimes I get one all the way at the end, but not today. Oh, there it was. My body position affects how close I am to the capacitor. It affects the tuning somewhat. Okay, I don't get it again. It would probably help if this were geared and I can make very small motions. So yeah, as you can see, it's uh, perfectly functional. Um, not as sensitive as some of the others, but for a single capacitor tuning radio, it's, uh, this is the best one I've found. In fact, this is the only one that I would actually call a radio it uh, gets at least four or five stations. There's about 17 in my area, so it gets four or five of those. One of them pretty softly. And I haven't changed the antenna yet. This antenna runs north-south, so if I went to my east-west antenna, I'd probably do some more stations. Okay, so that's it. Uh, if you're going to build one of these crystal radios with a single capacitor type tuning, this is the one I would recommend. Okay, well that was it for today. I hope you found that useful and interesting and you're home crystal radio experimentation.